Hello, good evening indeed, and many thanks for joining us right here on Rwanda Television. Uh, we are coming to you live from the heart of Kigali, and this is what makes our top stories tonight. The ESC heads of state have deliberated on a security situation in the eastern DRC and measures to promote peace, stability, and development in the East African region. In her, remarks, in her remarks during the official opening of the Commonwealth Human, Women's Forum 2022, the First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, called on authorities and different uh, levels to work together to eradicate gender-based violence. Women in business sector say that uh, though various initiatives uh, the government of Rwanda have taken to empower women, they were motivated uh, to start businesses which uh, promoted them in development, but also created jobs for other people, including women. A very good evening to you and welcome to Rwanda Television News. My name is Sam Kalisa and as we head on to our top story, the ESC heads of state have deliberated on uh, the security situation in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo and measures to promote peace, stability and development in the eastern DRC and in uh, the region and uh, Africa region beyond and committed to contribute to reconciliation and uh, lasting peace and determined to find a swift lasting solution to conflict in the Democratic Republic of Congo, particularly in the North and South Kivu, as well as in the Ituri provinces. We draw the report with Serge Nodi. The heads of state also directed that an immediate ceasefire should be enforced and cessation of hostilities should commence immediately, including withdrawal from recently taken positions. In doing so, the political process should be intensified by all parties in order to allow the citizens of the DRC to feel safe and secure and be able to pick up and continue their respective social, cultural and economic activities. They appreciated the supremacy of the constitution of the DRC and committed to maintain a unified and secure country with coherence and credible institutions of central government exercising full territorial authority and recognizing that peaceful means are the best way to resolve conflicts. The conclave commenced with a detailed brief on the military track. The brief defined the problem, highlighted the threat analysis, concept of operations, status of forces agreement, rules of engagement, and other legal and technical regulations to facilitate the operationalization of the regional force and its various operational arms. The heads of state accepted and adopted the concept of operations, status of forces agreement, and rules of engagement as presented by the chiefs of defense forces for immediate implementation. In doing so, the heads of state instructed that the regional force should, in cooperation with the military and administrative forces of the DRC, seek to stabilize and secure the peace in the DRC. The regional force should also cooperate in implementation of the disarmament and demobilization process. The heads of state also emphasized that all offensive language, hate speech, threats, of genocide and other politically inciting language must cease and must be discouraged by all parties and that the people of the DRC must be encouraged to work together in order to stabilize the Eastern DRC for it to prosper. The summit was attended by His Excellency Yoweri Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Sarva Kir, President of the Republic of South Sudan, his Excellency Felix Antoine Chisekedi, the President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, and His Excellency Evariste Ndaishimi, the President of the Republic of Burundi. The Head of State of the United Republic of Tanzania was represented by His Excellency Ambassador John Stephen Simbachawene, High Commissioner of Tanzania to Kenya.
you had it right, we just stepped into matters related to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. In her remarks during the official opening of the Commonwealth uh, Women's Forum 2022, the First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, has called on all authorities in different levels to work together to eradicate gender-based violence. Ghislaine Mugwaneza has this story. Delegates at the Commonwealth Women's Forum are discussing solutions to addressing pressing challenges affecting women and girls across the Commonwealth. The First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, began her remarks at the Commonwealth Women's Forum opening ceremony by welcoming delegates attending Chogam to Rwanda, despite a two-year halt imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite a two-year halt imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic, the 2022 Commonwealth Heads of uh, Government meeting, Chogam is holding here in Kigali, Rwanda, under the theme, Delivering a Common Future, Connecting, Innovating, Transforming. Comprising four forums, today we launch one of the most anticipated, the 2022 Commonwealth Women's Forum. I hope you share my high spirits. This year's theme, Delivering a Common Future, Transforming for Gender Equality, affords us the opportunity to focus on four imperatives to move the needle for equi equitable development, namely women in leadership, women's economic empowerment, gender and climate change, and ending violence against women. Women in leadership beyond numbers was among the first panel discussions in this opening ceremony. Women's representation in decision making could make real and lasting change for the betterment of society. The second thing I heard from what we've already spoken about was that we have to have confidence in ourselves. And clearly at 14, <laughs> I had that confidence. And maybe that was because, I don't know, I was brought up in an all-female household, whatever those choices are that they want to make. And that negative messaging, that stereotyping about, I, I find it now with my Women's Foundation, women entrepreneurs in many countries told, women don't do business. You probably found that uh, in, in banking. I'm sure others have found that. Two, you don't, you know, women aren't good with managing money. Only 25% of women are at the leadership table, though they make up more than half um, of the healthcare workforce. So I think for us, it's making sure that women are in leadership roles um, and they're well resourced in those roles. 500 women delegates from Commonwealth member countries have attended the forum. The Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland has said that Rwanda really valued the meeting due to how the country is well prepared. Women have been integral to the recovery and transformation of this nation in its journey from devastation to a powerhouse of development and progress. And I recognize Rwanda's leadership in building strong policy and legal frameworks, and I salute her achievements in ensuring women and girls are central to the development of the nation. Getting married while still at young age and early pregnancies are among the violence against women. The First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, has called on different authorities to collaborate in fighting gender-based violence. If not already, I trust that uh, this Commonwealth Women for Women's Forum will make you as confident in saying yes. We will ensure that there are, there are more women in leadership position. Yes, we will achieve women's economic empowerment. Yes, we will do our part to mitigate the adverse effects of climate change, especially on, uh, women's, on women and girls. Yes, together we can, must, and will end the violence against women and girls. Women and girls were urged to seek for all possible opportunities. However, their progress is hindered by having a small number of those who finish their studies, which limits them from getting jobs or doing businesses. Shislen Mugwaneza, RTV News.
Thank you very much, uh, Ghislaine. And uh, talking about uh, the empowerment of women and uh, gender equality, we now see what's happening in other Commonwealth nations with our case study in Namibia. In Namibia, 91.7% of uh, legal frameworks are that promote, enforce, and monitor gender equality under the SDG indicator with a focus on violence against women are already in place. As of February 2021, 44.2% of seats in parliament were held by women. And in 2013, 80.4% uh, of women representatives aged uh, 15 to 49 years had the need uh, for family planning satisfied with modern methods. And uh, however all this is done, work is still needed uh, to be done in Namibia just as other Commonwealth countries to achieve gender equality. Now, now, Isabel Masozera explores a further in a sit-down interview with uh, Sharonis Abuch, the executive uh, chairperson of the National Youth Council of Namibia, uh, where she is also highlighting how the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting and the Women Forum in particular can contribute to achieving a gender equality agenda. Absolutely. Just again to draw context, in Namibia we value and we place a premium on gender equality. We believe that women deserve and should be at the seat um, just like men and women have the competencies and the experience to, to, to lead and to make decisions. So Namibia places a, places a very extreme pre, a premium on gender equality and we see it through our, our decision making structures as well. Our cabinet for instance um, is made up of men and women. No, not fully, not fully balanced, but there's a great representation of yeah. women in our in our cabinet. So cabinet um, is the executive structure of our government. In our national assembly, you see an influx, especially of late, of young women. Namibia is very proud to say that we've got one of the youngest deputy ministers on the continent, yes. which is our deputy minister of information, communication, and technology. We've got young MPs um, as as. Um, from the ages of 23 to 24. So we are very proud to say that we are championing the cause of gender equality. Mm -hmm. But bringing it back to this platform, it is extremely important that we continue to advocate, that we continue to elevate the issue of gender equality. Mm -hmm. Because not, not all African countries may be as advanced, for instance, as we are in Namibia in championing mm -hmm. and leading and demonstrating yes. some seriousness around gender equality. Therefore, it's always an honor to be able to elevate the conversation to a platform such as the Commonwealth, yeah. where you've got the, not only the African continent, but you've got our um, young people from the uh, Pacific, yes. our young people from the Caribbean, to ensure that we rally behind mm -hmm. and we elevate the issue of making sure young, young women are included, young women are given that space to lead. Mm -hmm. And it's always an opportunity, especially when you know that there are heads of government coming, yes. to, to have a common action call around that. Yeah so that it becomes a policy matter to say, young women, you too deserve a seat at the table. Oh. It is reassuring to know that as, as young leaders, we are serious about the agenda of young women empowerment. Yeah. So it is very reassuring to come into a venue and you see your fellow sisters on the continent, abroad, from Europe, from the Pacific, from the UK, at such platforms, because it means that um, we are owning the narrative that we are trying to push in as far as yeah. including young women in the yes. conversation yes. and making sure young women lead. We can't talk about the issue of women empowerment and gender equality without actually having a clear role of men and boys. And uh, with this, we went out here to hear some of men, some of what, uh, what some of the men think is not being done right in uh, their side in regards to their role towards fighting gender-based violence. And this is what some of them had to say. I wouldn't call it mistakes, but maybe what we are not addressing very well. Uh, I think we are not engaging young people. Um, when it comes to gender equality, we need to start right away from boys when they are still young, because they are part of the system. They need to understand violence. They need to be taught how power, um, power leads to the violence against women. So I believe that if we can do uh, much work around engaging boys and girls when they are still as early as possible in school, uh, in our homes, it would translate to more results than just keeping and talking about it in these conferences. I think one of the ways is that uh, this fight should not be looked at as just a women's issue. Men should be involved right from understanding this, that this is a problem, analyzing it and coming on board to find solutions. So by really not leaving men 
besides or behind in this fight is a challenge. And I think another aspect is the understanding that uh, the foundation of it all is the education. What kind of messages, what kind of values do we give to young boys? What kind of information do, we, do they grow up with? This will make them really come out as partners in really ending violence, as partners in really understanding that anything that violates a human rights really affects all of us. So I think uh, creating a society which is equal and fair should be looking at both men right from the background, right from the education, schools, or even homes. The young girls, the young boys should be looking at themselves as equal, as one, and as partners, and being able to support each other. This is where we're looking at we're coming from. Absolutely, there is no way we can achieve a gender equality without a clear role of men and boys and women got to have a role in this. And moving ahead, Women Deliver Conference, the largest convening uh, uh, gathering for gender equality in the world, is set to happen here in Kigali, Rwanda in July 2023. Women Deliver convenings catalyze uh, conversations with stakeholders from all around the world, breaking barriers, addressing challenges, and identifying opportunities to advance gender equality, including uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights uh, to improve uh, the health rights and well-being of girls and women in all the interesting uh, identities. So my colleague Ethan Tashobia spoke with Dr. Maliha Khan, the incoming president and CEO of Women Deliver, to ask about the impact of this forum and its contributions towards achieving gender equality. Women Deliver 2023, which is going to be held, as you said, from the, from the 19th of July uh, 2023, is the largest convening on gender e uh, equality in the world. Um, we've been having these conferences, the sixth conference, we've been having these conferences for uh, about uh, 15 years. Uh, this conference, we hope to invite 6,000 people in person to Kigali and have 200,000 people online who will be participating in this global conference. Um, and we hope that there'll be people from 165 countries coming here. It's the largest convening that is focused on youth, so we invite a lot of young people. Uh, one third of the participants will be uh, youth. Uh, we invite people from across the world, from low and middle income countries, um, as well as many heads of state, the sort of leaders of many international organizations like the UN and WHO have traditionally come to Women Deliver conferences, as well as parliamentarians and ministers. So it is one of the largest convenings that focuses on people who champion, uh, you know, uh, communities the adv and do advocacy for communities who are vulnerable and marginalized, at the same time as head of states, head of government, leaders of international communities, uh, international organizations, as well as the private sector. So we bring them all together. We talk about the issues that girls and women across the world are facing, um, and we come up with innovative solutions for those and have and, and create shared commitments to realizing them. I, I mean, it looks like a big deal, to be honest, looking at the statement <laughs> with all, you know, the government involved yes. and, and all that. But why should a common person uh, you know, actually look forward to do this? Why should we care about it? And why is it so important about this fight? Because at the end of the day, if the common person, uh, the average girl and woman across the world, doesn't benefit from some of the ideas, the commitments, and some of the innovation that's coming out of the conference, then it's not a useful conference to have. So we focus very much on coming up with solutions uh, to solve some of these problems, problems like climate change, problems like uh, women's and women not uh, participating uh, equally in economic uh, activities, uh, gender-based violence, um, universal health care. These are all issues that the common person faces. Yeah. And these are all issues that can only be solved if you bring together uh, advocates from around the world, you bring together world leaders, and you bring together the private sector. And that's what we try to do. Before we get off this issue of women empowerment, women in uh, the business sector say that uh, through various initiatives of the government of Rwanda to empower women, they were motivated to start businesses which supported them in development but also created jobs for other people, including women. Olive Nete has this report. Marie-Ange Claudine Ngabire, a 39-year-old woman, is an entrepreneur. 
Before the pandemic, she was doing a construction business. But during the pandemic, she started a new business of exporting fruits and vegetables. She explains how she got the initiative. During the pandemic, getting a job was very difficult. My employees didn't have a job. I remember it was in the first lockdown and everyone was using the money they saved. In the second lockdown, they started calling me, asking me how they will survive in the pandemic because life was hard back then. And I also got to a point where I felt like using my capital. That's when I thought, if I eat the money I have, how will I survive? Marie-Ange has a business called Tropiwanda. She started by exporting 800 kilograms of avocados, but currently she exports 20 tons of avocados and 5 tons of passion fruits per week. Currently, she works with 1,500 farmers and 468 employees. That includes 233 women. She explores more on the challenges faced. I used to tell people that I'm going to start a business during the pandemic and that it will succeed. But they would tell me that I'm going to waste the money. They advised me to use the money in other home-related activities. They also used to tell me that if I use the money to start the business, I will fail. Women-led businesses continue to provide employment to a large number of the population, including women. According to Speranza Brewery, they have 155 employees, of which 97 are women and 58 are men. While Dicam, a business of sewing clothes, provided employment to 150 permanent workers and 90 temporary workers. They appreciate the initiative of the government of Rwanda of empowering women. The country valued women, and I appreciate that initiative. I thank the President of the Republic. He supported us and did not let us be unemployed, yet we were capable. The policy of Made in Rwanda, in which I'm also included, shows us that the government of Rwanda has good leaders, good governments, and that the government of Rwanda loves Rwandans and supports them. The first example is that sometimes we even work at night. We have full security. We do not face problems. We can work at any hour of the night. Employees in these businesses explain how it assisted them in development. Tropiwanda helped in so many ways. It supported me after my studies by giving me a job during the COVID-19 pandemic. This motivates me, and in the salary I get, I want to start my own project based on my capacity and advice from my leader. Women in business sector points out that their goal is to expand their activities so as to provide employment to a big number of people, which will support them in development as well as contribute to the development of the country. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you very much, Olive. Uh, while the Commonwealth uh, Women's Forum focuses on uh, the contribution of women in the development agenda, the Commonwealth Association for the Aging uh, strives to connect all ages uh, through the Commonwealth uh, by lobbying for the older persons to be part of that journey. The Director General of the Commonwealth uh, Age, uh, Fadama Shamam, and the Chief Executive Officer of the Association of the Aged, based in Durban, Durban South, South Africa, uh, believes that older women have a role to play in attaining a sustainable development in terms of sharing experience and wisdom. So Chagam is such an important platform to be able to uh, lobby for all of the key agenda items. Um, so I'm here representing the sector of older persons. Yes. Now, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we have more older women in the world than you have older men. Maybe we're more resilient. Wow. But uh, so there's, Actually, there's yeah, yes. <laughs> so there's more older women mm -hmm. than you get older men. Mm. And and so the older women have such a role to play in the narrative of development. And as, uh, as common age, we are here at uh, Chagam with the eight person delegation to be able to make, sh to, to enable us to lobby for older persons being part of the development agenda. Yes. Now, we, when we think about the Commonwealth and we think about development, we know that there's quite a lot of focus on youth development, but youth development can never happen without considering the contributions of older people yes. 
the experience of older people, the wisdom of older people, and also seeing older people as your partners in this journey as well. Yes. So that's the message. And learning We've, from the mistakes they've made. Absolutely. Yes. And I think, you know, so as, as, as common age, we are advocating for an all-inclusive commonwealth. The issue around inclusivity becomes yes. very important. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's what we would like the leaders of the Commonwealth to understand. That when we look at the development agenda, um, let it be all inclusive. Look yeah. at celebrating mm -hmm. the diversity mm -hmm. of what we have in the Commonwealth, not just in terms of cultures, mm -hmm. but also in terms of ages as well. Yes. There are different people of different ages who bring different value yes. to the table. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to be looking at as well. Yes. All right. So, um, so, so uh, still on that point, um, what do you think? Because um, obviously there are challenges yeah. because uh, the mindset is different, <laughs> yes, and um, also that the goals are different. So, um, blending that in yeah. can be also a challenge, I believe. Yeah. So, so far, what are the challenges? But of course, not neglecting the benefits of it because they they set the path. Yes. You know, everything that we're building right now is from what they've already. Um, it's like a foundation Gen building a house yes, yes. so okay. but there should be um i think there are the issues like which could be uh hindering you know yeah i think you know the biggest issue around including older people mm -hmm. is this issue around ageism so yes. as soon as as soon as you start discriminating on the base of age mm -hmm. it's ageism mm -hmm. and uh i think that uh, we need to encourage people to see the value that older people bring to the conversation. Yes, yes they, are, they have laid the foundation, but they are also very critical in terms of how we move forward. Yes. So, you know, within the context of where I'm from in South Africa, I work yes. with a non-profit organization, uh, the Association for the Age that works with older people. I get my greatest ideas from speaking to older people. They help me to formulate my thoughts, they hold me accountable, so when I come up with stupid solutions, they tell me that, sometimes not very quietly, but they hold you accountable. Mm. And I think that's the thing as well. So if you're looking at uh, a listening partner, if you're looking at somebody to collaborate with, mm. if you're looking at um, someone who's part of your solution team, yeah. that's where older people should be sitting mm. because they will come up with things which are practical, yes. they will come up with things which make sense mm. and implementable as well, and yeah. yes, absolutely. And, and they will give you honest feedback. Thank you very much for being with us on this particular edition of Rwanda Television News. We end it here, but the rest of our programs continues. Up until next time, my name is Sam Kalisa. Stay safe and have a fruitful week ahead. Goodbye.